morning. And Happy New Year. I tell you, it's 2024. Glad to see you guys here. And again, those that are tuning in to Facebook Live and YouTube Live, we're grateful for that. Um, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you and praise you for this morning and thank you for this new year. As we have said before, we're grateful for the blessings of 2023. And Lord, we anticipate your blessing and favor in 2024. And Lord, one of those blessings is your promise to never leave us nor forsake us and that you will be with us always. So Father, may we draw strength from this. I praise you for your grace and your goodness. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. It's in his precious name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, well, we're going to start in the book of Joshua. Again, you know, this past Sunday, we were in Joshua chapter 1, and I just want to kind of use that to uh, spring forward just a little bit. But while you're turning there, just to remind you of some things, that we have a the Good News Club starting on Monday. Uh, again, this is a partnership with Child Evangelism Fellowship, but it's also with uh, Eastminster Presbyterian Church. It's actually their Good News Club. They aren't able to meet in the schools anymore, so we've opened our facility uh, for them to be able to come. And so uh, be in prayer for that. If you'd like to volunteer with that, it's not too late. If you want to just come and observe and see if it's something you want to be part of, uh, let us know. They have a, an option for that also. Also, we have a blood drive coming up uh, January 16th. Uh, that's here, so if you'll go to the church website and click on the, the little thing there, the slide you'll see, it'll take you where you can register. Uh, again, this is an opportunity to be a blessing out in the community. So uh, last year, I think we did meet our goal. Uh, so hopefully we'll meet our goal again this year and uh, to be in prayer for the blood drive. So we're in Joshua chapter one. And as I mentioned this past Sunday, this was, uh, they're beginning uh, the process of going into the promised land. Uh, Moses has passed away. Now that Joshua, his successor, is coming along, and God is reassuring Joshua that, hey, just as I was with Moses, look, I'm going to be with you, Joshua, and here's what you need to do. And so as I was studying uh, for that sermon, you know, it struck me how similar this is to the Great Commission, to the Great Commission, Matthew uh, chapter 28, and I mentioned that briefly this past Sunday. But it's important to remember our mission, to understand what we're supposed to be about and what we're supposed to do. Uh, years ago, uh, there were two organizations that started roughly the same generation time period. One was called the YMCA, Young Men's Christian Association. And its goal was to reach young men with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Is YMCA known for its evangelistic efforts today? Is the YMCA known as uh, a place for evangelizing and preaching and sharing the gospel of Jesus? No, the YMCA is known for you know, so good values, family, fun, a, a health organization, right? They've got the swimming pools, they've got basketball courts, they've got you know, a lot of sports and activities, and, which is good. But the YMCA started as an outreach to reach young men with the gospel of Jesus, and now they're known as a health organization. What happened? Somewhere along the way that the mission changed. Somewhere along the way they let the method become the mission. They let, oh, we're providing sports and stuff. Well, that's what we do. And they forgot that they're to be about that. But there was another organization that started, like I say, roughly the same period, as the YMCA, and that was the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army was founded in order to meet people's needs and share the gospel with them. In fact, the guy who's the founder of Salvation Army, he, he put it this way, three S's, soup, soap, salvation. That's what they're to be about. Soup, give them something to eat. Soap, give them a place where they can get cleaned up. And what? Share the gospel with them. What's the Salvation Army known for today? Roughly the same thing. Maybe a little more sophisticated now. But when you give your money the little red kettle, you know they're going to what? Feed people? And they're going to share the gospel. They stayed true to the mission. They stayed true to what they were founded for. 
And we as the church, we as believers in Jesus Christ, need to always remind ourselves in the beginning of a new year is always a good reminder what we're to be about. What is the mission that we're supposed to do? What is that we're supposed to, to be about? And so I do this uh, going to Joshua chapter 1 as a reminder of that because God is reiterating the mission to Joshua and, and sending him in. He's commissioning him to go and take the promised land. And in that commissioning for Joshua, it's similar to the commissioning that we receive from Jesus. It's similar to what Jesus is telling us what to go into the world and share and proclaim the gospel of Jesus. You know, it's times like this we have to, to get back to basics. And I think it was the year 1961, and it was spring training or summer training for the Green Bay Packers. And, uh, you know, the legendary coach, Vince Lombardi, the year before his team had lost in the to the Philadelphia Eagles in the championship game. And so they were a pretty good team, but he wanted them to be better. And he made a very famous quote, very famous statement at the very beginning. These men have gathered. He's going to give them their marching orders for the new season. And he takes in his hand a, a football. And he tells his team, men or gentlemen, this is a football. So he was what? Getting back to basics. He's kind of like, we're not talking offense, defense. He said, we're going to start with the, just this is a football. We're going to look at this football and we're going to start from there. And of course, from there, they built a dynasty for uh, football, so much so that people still quote Vince Lombardi, <laughs> just like I'm doing today, right? That type of him. And so it's a getting back to basics. So let's look in Joshua again here real quick and see what is it that God has told Joshua to do. Uh, we'll just start in verse 7. He says, Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe it to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So hold your hand here in Joshua real quick. Let's read. Matthew chapter 28. Again, the, the great commission, the, the parting words of Jesus as he is commissioning his disciples to go with the gospel. So here we start in verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And so in the Great Commission, uh, there is one main verb, and that is make disciples. And then there are these participles, which help us understand how are we to make disciples. And so the participles are the go, you know, to baptize, to teach. So going, baptizing, teaching, these are the things that we're supposed to do. And as I was comparing that to what God told Joshua, it, it parallels very well. Uh, in fact, if you looked back in Joshua in verse 2, it says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over in this Jordan you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Notice God says in Joshua that he has the authority to give this land. Why does God have the authority to give this land to Moses? First he gave it to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, but now he's reiterating that for the people. Why does God have that authority? Because he does. <laughs> he's the creator. He's the sustainer. And so going back to Matthew 28, Jesus says in verse 18, 
all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. We go because of the authority of God. Joshua was going, why? Because of the authority of God, the promise of God. He says, I have given this land to you. Now, there was going to be some battles and there was going to be uh, trials and tribulations, but he's what? He has the authority. So there's that aspect of the commission. He is authoritative. He gives us the authorization. He gives us the right to go and share the gospel. You see, we live in a culture that doesn't want us to share the truth. What right do you have to tell me that I'm wrong to live this way? What, who, what right do you have to tell me that what I believe is wrong? And those are legitimate questions and we would say because of the authority of God, the authority of God's word. That's why we share it. That's why we go. That's why people are willing to die for their faith. I just saw that in Nigeria, 200 Christians were massacred at Christmas. Why? Just because they were Christians. You would think, does that make people stop believing? No, they still continue to believe in Jesus, even though they know the risk and the, and, and the dangers that are involved. And they do it by because God has all authority. And we're to listen to his word and not the laws of man. And so there's a parallel. God says, I'm giving you this land. He has what? The authority to do that. And then as we read there in verse 19, he says, go therefore and make disciples. So the word there, go therefore, if you look in verse, uh, back in Joshua chapter 1, verse 7, he says, uh, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper, what? Wherever you go. You see the in the New Testament, when Jesus says, go therefore, it's almost like as you are going, it's almost like it's wherever you go, you're to make disciples. And he makes it explicit in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, to make him where? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, what? To the ends of the earth is where we are to go. And so he's saying, listen, you will prosper, what? Wherever you go, Jesus tells us what? Go therefore and make disciples. And as I mentioned before, that's the main verb that's here. That's the main goal. That's the main task. What's Joshua's main goal? What's Joshua's main task? Uh, in verse 6, it was what? To divide as an inheritance the land. To divide, he says, you're going in to what? Conquer the land and divide it among the, the tribes of Israel. You're to do that. You're to take his uh, command and to implement it. That's the main goal. For the Christian, our main goal is what? Make disciples. Of who? All the nations. Going on again in Matthew 28. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So baptizing is what? that ordinance that Jesus has given to us that we might identify with him, that we would identify ourselves as being a follower of Jesus. It's a proclamation to the world that we belong to Christ. Notice the parallel in Joshua chapter 1. In Joshua chapter 1, he says this, in verse 2, he says, uh, Now therefore arise, go over the Jordan, and all this people to the land, which I have given to them, what? The children of Israel. He identifies that it's to the nation of Israel. And what set the Israelites apart from all the other nations at that time? What set them apart? Obviously, God's law, the, the books of uh, the first five books of the Old Testament. But if one of the things that they had, what was the ordinance they had to identify them? They had circumcision. It was a symbolic representation that what? They belong to God. And so it wasn't by accident that here in Joshua, he says, the children of Israel. He's saying a specific group of people. And when he tells, tells us, when well, you're making a specific group of people, disciples, what they are identifying with Jesus through baptism. Again, going back to the Great Commission in Matthew, 
He says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. So teaching them to observe all things. That's found in, back in Joshua chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do what? According to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. Is that you may prosper wherever you go. Verse 8, the book, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So Jesus says, teaching them what? To observe all things that what I have commanded you. To be a follower of Jesus is not just to know a bunch of facts about Jesus. To be a follower of Jesus is not just to say, oh, I'll follow Jesus. It's to actually follow Jesus. It's to actually observe and to do the things that he said. And even in, built into this great commission, what is it? It's going. <laughs> it's teaching. It's what? Uh, baptizing. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. To observe all things. A disciple is one who learns and obeys disciple is one who what trusts and obeys so we see that parallel over in Joshua as it is here in the gospel of Matthew and then finally that last part of the great commission in Matthew 28 he says and lo I am with you always even to the end of the age that's the exact same promise that God made to Joshua he made it to Joshua in verse uh, chapter 1 verse 9 have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go he says I will be what with you and it says also in verse 5 I will not leave you nor forsake you the exact same promise that Jesus makes in the Great Commission and so as we approach a new year we're to keep the main thing the main thing. We're to be back to basics. And the basics, as just as Vince Lombardi said, this is a football. We need to remember, well, this, this is the Great Commission. And the Great Commission is what? To make disciples. That's the main goal. That's the main task is to make disciples. And where are we to do? It's wherever we go. It speaks to location. You know, it's here, there, everywhere, we're to make disciples. What do we want them to do? We want them to identify with Jesus Christ. An expression of that is baptism. We want them to be baptized. And so this coming year, let's pray we see people baptized. Let's pray that we go with the gospel. We have an opportunity with the Good News Club, but we also have other opportunities to go with the gospel. We want to see people baptized and follow Jesus Christ. We want to see people uh, learn and observe all that Jesus said. That's our task. The goal is to make disciples. The location is everywhere. The identi identification is with Christ, and the task that he's given to us is to teach them, is to share with them. And so that would be in a setting like this. It would be on Sunday mornings, whether it's a Bible community group or Sunday school, or whether it's a small group meeting in a home. We want to be teaching people to observe, not just knowledge, but want them to have what transformation, obedience, following the gospel. And then finally, remember, getting back to the basics, the just foundational promise that he says, I will be with you always. I will be with you. And so there's sometimes in life when we may feel alone and that no one is with us or cares for us or what have you, but know this, God's promise is true, and he's with us whatever we go through. So let's trust him with that. So as we think about the new year, let's get back to the basics. Keep it on track. Let's not be like the YMCA that lost its way, you know, from its original founding. Let's be more like the, the Salvation Army in that sense, staying on task. And we as believers of Christ, we as members of Indian River Baptist Church, need to stay on mission for the Lord. And our mission is something that we say every Sunday. We need to make sure we do that, is what? To declare his glory among the nations. I mean, that's, and it starts here, but it's to spread around the world.
So let's, uh, like I say, get back to the basics on that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your great commission that you would give us this privilege but also responsibility. I thank you for this. I pray that, Lord, you would bless and, and strengthen us to uh, just understand more fully how to obey your word. Show us where we fall short. Show us, Lord, again, your love and mercy for us and your promise, just reminding us and assuring us of your presence. Just as you were with Joshua, Lord, you will be with us because that's your promise you repeat for us. So, Father, we thank you. And Lord, we love you. We pray for this new year that, Lord, we see people saved, we see people baptized, we see people growing to be more like you. We pray this in Jesus' name. God's people say, amen. amen. All right. Well, again, I appreciate you guys being here. For those that tuned in, appreciate that also. Let's say our vision verse, and then we'll be dismissed. But let's say this together. Declare his glory among the nations. We get to do this. God bless you. Thank you.